It seems like everyone these days wants to be internet famous, but since internet fame is so new, we're not really sure how possible it is for influencers to hold on to their fame long term. Well, now that YouTube and Instagram have been leading social media platforms for many years, we're finally able to see that some influencers that were once massive on their respective platforms have now lost their influence. Hey, what's up guys? It's Mackenzie here, and today on IO, I'm gonna be giving you the scoop on the top 10 influencers who lost their influence and why I think that they did. But before I get into it, I want to say I'm not trying to shade any of these people, as I'm sure some of them changed up their career trajectories, you know, for their own reasons. I more so want to look at this as analyzing the careers of some early influencers and kind of taking away some of the lessons we can learn from them. Also, before I get into it, make sure to subscribe down below for more juicy videos like this. Starting off at number 10, we have Zoella. So Zoella used to be one of the biggest channels on all of YouTube. And in the early days, she completely dominated the beauty vlogger space. And I actually remember back in the day, she would hang out with other British YouTubers, like her boyfriend Alfie Days, of course, as well as Casper Lee, her brother Joe Sugg, and Marcus Butler, along with a few others. And I swear, these British YouTubers completely dominated YouTube in the early 2010s. But unfortunately, after so many years of being huge social media stars, she, along with the rest of them, started to lose popularity among their fan base. One article in the Telegraph tried to piece together some of the things that happened that led to her downfall, citing some scandals that happened towards the end of her career. One where she sold overpriced advent calendars and another where she was exposed for some offensive tweets. And looking at her channel, she still does have a lot of loyal fans that seem to have stuck by her side. But as another YouTuber I never pointed out in a video he did on her, she had been losing thousands of subscribers each month at the time he made his video. And although he mostly talked about her scandals in his video, most of the comments of that video were people explaining how they stopped watching her because as they grew up, they could not relate to her content anymore and they felt that she didn't grow with her audience. And I would also probably agree that's probably a big reason that I stopped watching her channel as well. Then in at number nine, Yovana Mendoza. So Yovana, known on YouTube as Raw Vanna in the past, used to be a very influential raw vegan YouTuber and social media influencer. And I actually used to watch a lot of her videos back when I was experimenting with veganism myself. But the unfortunate thing about Mendoza's brand was that her entire livelihood was based around her being a vegan, specifically a raw vegan. And when she made the decision that she no longer wanted to be vegan anymore, she lost a huge portion of her fan base. After she was caught eating fish, she decided to come clean to her fans in a 33 minute long video that's now deleted where she describes that she was no longer vegan and she had been incorporating animal products into her diet per her doctor's recommendation. But of course, with most of her fans being devout vegans, she got tons of backlash for lying to her fans for so long before coming clean. And she lost a lot of followers that did not support the decision. She still posts food and health related content to this day, but her videos still get lots of hate and dislikes from people that are still disappointed in her lifestyle change. And at number eight, Cameron Dallas. So Cameron Dallas was one of the biggest creators on Vine and signed huge deals with Calvin Klein and Dolce & Gabbana after the app shut down. He was also doing all the like movie star in the making rounds in LA and New York City media events. But after he tried to break into mainstream entertainment with his feature film debut with his film Expelled, which got terrible reviews and then chasing Cameron Dallas, his Netflix series, which was canceled after one season. After all this, people were unsure if he could translate his success off Vine. And then after he encountered some personal issues with addiction and depression, he took some time off social media before coming back and getting into music. But unfortunately, even with his massive Instagram following, it did not seem to take off quite as he probably hoped. And at number seven, Emma Halberg. Emma Halber got into a massive scandal when last year some people discovered that she was Caucasian. And you might be wondering why this is a scandal. Well, the issue was that in her Instagram posts, she exhibited a lot of traits that are usually seen by women of color, like dark tan skin and black curly hair, among other things. And because of the way she appeared online, most of her fan base thought that she was African American. But once the post came out exposing her, her fan base completely turned on her. And she was one of the first people publicly accused of what we now call black fishing. In the wake of the scandal, she got a ton of hate online and lost a lot of followers as well as sponsors. To address things, she claimed that she did not try and mislead anybody and that she was just tanned easily and had naturally dark features. But people did not accept this excuse as many people had commented on her photos alluding to the fact that they thought she was a person of color and she never once corrected them saying that she was not. To this day, she's still posting on her Instagram and has not changed her appearance at all. But also because of this, she still gets comments about her race to this day. 
Up at number six, Belle Gibson. So Belle was a very popular figure on social media and she gained all her fame after she published a book and released an app based on the premise that she had cured her cancer without drugs and instead by using holistic alternative therapies. As well, she had also claimed to have donated huge sums of money to charities. But in 2015, after many journalists started to investigate these claims, Gibson admitted to have fabricated her entire cancer story. Well, it also came out that far smaller sums than she had been claimed actually had gone to charities. Charity. As a response to these lies, she was convicted in Australia and fined over $400,000. And of course, after all these lies, her career as a wellness guru influencer were completely over. Happy through number five, Olivia Jade. So Olivia Jade, or as you might know her as Lori, Aunt Becky Laughlin's daughter, got into one of the biggest scandals of 2019 after it was discovered that her family had bribed the school's admissions department 500 grand and lied that she was a rower in order to gain her admission to USC. In this scandal, she was well known online as a beauty YouTuber and Instagrammer. She even had a makeup line with Sephora and brand deals with Marc Jacobs and Estee Lauder. After the huge public outcry about the privilege of the people involved in the scandal, she was quickly dropped by all the brands she had worked with and she went completely quiet on her social media accounts. And although she probably has a loyal fan base, when she returned to YouTube, she was met with a lot of criticism, with her first video back getting more dislikes than likes. And her first post back on Instagram was her giving the middle finger to media outlets, which a lot of people did did not like. So it's safe to say her career might suffer for a while. Up at number four, Tyler Oakley. So Tyler Oakley is another person who is considered to be one of the OG YouTubers, and he was massive back in the early 2010s. He also had an incredibly fast rise to prominence on the platform, which gave him even more momentum on the way up. He was mainly known for his lifestyle content with vlogs and tons of collabs with his other OG YouTube friends. And once he reached record highs in his fame, he started to get some of the best mainstream deals YouTubers had seen, collabing with A-list celebrities like Hillary Clinton and even getting a deal with Ellen DeGeneres. But when neither of these collabs did very well is when many speculate his career took a wrong turn. And YouTuber Einaber gave his reason for why he thought Oakley's channel was failing. And he attributed it to the fact that Tyler started to hang around mainstream celebrities and put his YouTube content on the back burner because of it. A lot of people in the comments of that video agreed, also saying that they felt he did not change of his content and it got very repetitive. Tyler is still posting online weekly, but for having 7 million subscribers, he doesn't really get the numbers even close to what he used to. Up at number three, Nash Greer. So Nash is another person who got their start on Vine and he managed to land some fashion deals after the app had ended. And similarly to Cameron Dallas, after Vine, he tried to break into mainstream media with acting. But unfortunately, his projects did not take off with his series called The Deleted Ending After One Season. And then he starred along Bella Thorne and You Get Me. But the fact that the project did not get good reviews from critics hurt his budding career once again. Currently, it seems like Greer's main focus is being a dad to his new baby as he's sharing all the adorable baby pictures that you would expect to his socials. He's still regularly posting to all the social medias and it seems like he's trying to go from the MegCon aesthetic into a family channel. And considering some family channels are massive on YouTube today, he could definitely make a huge comeback in the future. I guess we'll have to wait and see. And at number two, Jesse Stevens and Savannah Montano. So this is a real throwback for probably a lot of the girls out there, but I remember back in the day, these two were the quintessential couple of goals and they dominated Tumblr and even Instagram back when it first started. It seems that the couple started to kind of fall off on social media after they started to have relationship problems with them first breaking up in 2016 and then getting back together before ending it officially in 2018. It seems that after the breakup, Savannah has managed to hold on to more of their fandom than Jesse did. And both of them still post regularly to Instagram, but with Savannah doing way better numbers. But uh, please let me know guys below if you like remember them. I really hope I'm not the only one. Then in at number one, FoosieTube. So Yusuf Aracat, better known online as FoosieTube, was a massive YouTube creator a few years back, running one of the biggest prank channels on all of YouTube. He also had an incredibly popular vlog channel called Dose of Fusi. But Fusi was wrapped up in so many scandals, it was really difficult to get a timeline of all the crazy events that happened, to be honest. But just to name some of them, he exposed a secret that most of the pranks on YouTube were fake. He got into a fake fight with Rice Gum. He started a convention similar to TanaCon that was a complete flop. He lost in a YouTube boxing match, and at one point he said he was going to give away his YouTube channel. But a lot of his downfall on social media has been due to his struggles with his mental health, telling his fans openly that he's diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And a lot of his fans have credited the disorder with the many changes that have been seen in his YouTube persona over the years. As of now, he's still posting on his YouTube channel, but he's constantly considering quitting social media. And because of this, he's lost a lot of his loyal fans along the way. Starting off with number 10, we have Michelle Phan. 
So all of you OG YouTube watchers, especially women, will know who Michelle Phan was. But for those of you who don't, she was the biggest beauty YouTuber on the platform when it first started. And she was also one of the biggest creators on the platform in general in its early days. But after about 10 years on YouTube, Michelle all of a sudden vanished from the online space, going silent on YouTube and all her other social media platforms. Fans were shocked and confused, but sometime later she posted an explanation on her YouTube channel called Why I Left. In the video, she describes how her fame and success changed her and how she was not happy in the end. So she needed to disconnect from social media to find herself again. And at the end of the video she posted in 2017, she didn't say if or when she would be posting on YouTube again. But since that upload, Michelle has posted infrequently to YouTube and she's posting pretty often on her Instagram. But in an interview with Variety, she revealed that her new focus is on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, as well as some beauty companies that she owns, which is pretty cool. In at number nine, Graveyard Girl. So Bunny, aka Graveyard Girl, first rose to prominence on YouTube back in about 2014, when she got a lot of attention for her Does This Thing Really Work? YouTube series, where she would test out products for her viewers with a lot of them being as seen on TV products that people were genuinely really curious to learn about. And on these videos, she would average 10 to 15 million views per video. So trust me, this girl was massive. But then all of a sudden, she began to not really get as many views as before. And I know this is true as she said it herself in a docu-series that Shane Dawson did on her called My YouTube Channel is Dying, Graveyard Girl. In this series, he goes to her house and interviews her on why she believes that her channel is losing views and subscribers. And after he spends a few days with her, he gives her some tips and tries to push her to make different types of content on her channel. But unfortunately, even though her channel did get a bump right after the series aired, it didn't really last, with her channel slowly falling into the same habits it was before. In the comments of Shane's video, people say that Bunny should have done more to follow Shane's advice if she really wanted to be successful. And at number eight, Michael Buckley of What The Buck? So way back in 2008 when YouTube first launched, Michael Buckley was one of its first stars, with him becoming known for his show called What The Buck. He was essentially the first ever drama slash commentary channel on the platform, and he would make videos pretty similarly to the ones that we actually make on our channel today. But after some time being a star on the platform, his star lost its shine. He even addressed this in a video he made. Hi guys, it's Michael Buckley, and today's video is called Why Did My YouTube Channel Die? Where he said that in about 2011, he saw the new creators coming up that were better at making content and wanted the fame aspect more than him. So he decided it was time for him to take a different direction with his career. And since then, he has been working as a life coach. And to my knowledge, it's still what he does to this day. In at number seven, Smosh. So Smosh was huge on YouTube back in the day. And it's what inspired a lot of current day YouTubers to make their own videos. Smosh was a channel run by Anthony Padilla and Ian Hecox and it became a YouTube sensation where they would film comedy skits with them popularizing comedy skits on the platform. But after seeing some decline in their channel, it was acquired by Defy Media in 2011. And although it still featured Anthony and Ian, it turned into an enterprise with multiple channels and tons of on-camera talent. But Anthony made huge headlines when he decided to leave Smosh to venture out on his own. And thankfully for him, that paid off and his own personal channel has been really killing it lately. And I really enjoy watching the videos on there. And at number six, Casper Lee. So Casper Lee is another YouTuber that used to be huge during the whole British invasion second wave of YouTube and was really good friends with Zoella and her brother Thatcher Joe. But like the other British YouTubers, after a while of doing very well on the platform, kind of all of a sudden Casper was just not getting as many views as he once did. And after some breaks on and off and uploading, Casper is still making videos regularly on his channel and his views fluctuate pretty significantly. But it seems like he's probably still making enough to live off of. But it does seem like the numbers are starting to get to him, especially in one video he uploaded at the end of 2019, where he ponders a comment that someone wrote asking how long he would continue to make YouTube videos. And although he did not give a straight answer, it seemed like the message was that he was focusing more on his life outside of YouTube rather than his life on it. How about through at number five, Onision. So this Onision one shouldn't really be a shock because of all the terrible things that he's been accused of doing recently by YouTubers like Blair White. But even before he was exposed and his name was starting to reappear in the headlines, his channel was definitely not what it once was. Back in about 2010 and 2011, Onision was huge on YouTube as somewhat of a commentary channel. But after he got into many different controversies over the last few years, his commentary was not as respected as it once was, and people did not really want to hear what he had to say anymore. 
Currently, Anision has a few different channels and he's still posting frequently to them. But along with them having pretty low views, they also have many more dislikes than likes now. And at number four, Leafy is here. So Leafy was another YouTuber that dominated the commentary channel genre on YouTube in about 2016. And he was known for being very politically incorrect. And since he was uploading daily and his, video and his videos were long, he quickly gained a lot of followers as the YouTube algorithm had picked him up. But all of a sudden, after nothing had really changed about his content, his views started to go down. One YouTuber, The Gamer From Mars, said in his video that he believes that Leafy was actually suppressed by YouTube, as they saw that his channel with very toxic content on it was growing pretty fast, and they wanted to stop it in order to not hurt YouTube's good name. But a lot of Leafy's downfall had to do when iDubs made a content cop about him and essentially destroyed his career so much that Leafy left the platform. Although Leafy briefly came back to YouTube this year to troll iDubs, he told Keemstar he had no intention of returning to YouTube full time anytime soon. In at number three, Fred. So Lucas Cruikshank, who was known for the character he portrayed, Fred Figglehorn, was at one point the most subscribed to channel on YouTube, and his channel was the first to hit 1 million subscribers. And his early fame gave him tons of opportunities too, getting him a TV show deal with MTV, as well as a movie trilogy and a guest appearance on iCarly. After his traditional media endeavors were not as well received, in 2014 Fred's channel was rebranded with him posting content for kids without Fred in the videos. But that channel was abandoned in 2015, and now Fred's channel has been rebranded as Lucas, and Lucas is just trying to be himself instead of Fred. He is posting regularly and still gets pretty good views, but he does not get the recognition that he once used to. Up at number two, Ray William Johnson. So way back when YouTube first started around 2008, Equals 3, hosted by Ray William Johnson, was the biggest show on all of YouTube. The show reviewed and commentated on viral videos, and millions of people watched, with views that would seriously rival top YouTubers now. But after many years of doing the show and seeing its slight decline, Ray decided that he was bored of the show and didn't really want to do it anymore. So he hired on some new hosts for the show, but none really stuck, and the show's popularity quickly fell. Then the show got into a huge legal battle for using clips that were not theirs, and after Equals 3 lost this battle, it hurt their channel once again. Now Ray is trying to branch into other media content, and he has been involved in other mainstream media projects. He now also has a podcast that he posts to his YouTube channel, but the views are nowhere near what it once was. Then up at number one, Rebecca Black. So Rebecca Black is a total internet legend who was able to take what some would consider 15 minutes of fame and sustain that fame for years, even being involved in huge projects like a Katy Perry music video. After Rebecca released the now infamous track Friday, it quickly went insanely viral, and she was the most talked about internet personality there was. Unfortunately for her though, a lot of the feedback on the video was negative, with more people laughing at her than with her. After the track went huge, she was getting tens of millions of views on the video. After the track went huge and she was getting tens of millions of views on the video, she decided to still keep uploading on her channel, uploading vlogs and other lifestyle content, as well as some other music videos that didn't even get close to as viral as Friday. Rebecca has opened up about how terrible this whole experience was for her mental health, with her opening up about her low self-esteem, depression, and bullying she dealt with following the release of the song. And most surprisingly for me, she actually revealed that she had a lot of career setbacks because of the song, with record labels and people in the industry not wanting anything to do with her. Currently, Rebecca is still working on her music and she's posting regularly to all her socials. And while her YouTube does not really get much engagement, her Instagram is doing pretty well. And maybe 10 years after Friday, she will make a real comeback online. I really hope she does. So starting off with number 10, we have Team 10. And I didn't even do that on purpose, that both are 10. Anyway, <laughs> so I saw a few of you commenting that Jake Paul should be on this list and I personally don't agree. Although I'm not a fan of his, he's still very much relevant on YouTube. Honestly, as YouTube's kind of punching bag, if I'm gonna be honest. But one part of Jake that has definitely failed is his business venture, Team 10. So Team 10 was revolutionary in the internet space, with Jake forming a talent collective where they all lived and worked in the same house, trying to all blow up together. And although it did work and a lot of the members of Team 10 became huge in the venture, it didn't last. It all started with a lot of the team's biggest members leaving. Some because of personal issues with Jake and others with large egos that thought that they could do it themselves. New members also told an insider that Greg Paul, who is Jake's father, coming on board was a big reason for a lot of the team members leaving. 
but for one reason or another, many of the talent that the fans knew and loved ended up leaving, and the new members that came on weren't as well received by the fans. And as of now, I don't think that there's one member still on Team 10 that was there during its heyday, and now it's considered pretty much a thing of the past. In at number nine, Dan and Phil. Dan and Phil were a duo that used to be huge on YouTube, and even I was actually a fan of theirs at one point, Dan in particular. They were featured at VidCon and were usually a big part of YouTube rewinds, but over the last few years, the duo has really fallen off, with them stating back in 2019 that they were going to take a break from their duo content to focus more on their main channel. But the problem with that is that neither of them actually did that, with both of them still posting on YouTube and getting pretty good views when they do, but since they never upload consistently like a lot of other YouTubers these days, they have become an afterthought to a lot of their loyal fan base. But I do have to say, Phil has been uploading more consistently recently, so it seems like he's trying to get back into the YouTube game again, while Dan might be just focused on other things. Gosh, and at number eight, gosh. Grace Helbig. So Grace Helbig is another OG YouTuber that has been around on the platform for over 10 years. She got really big on the platform when she was on a channel called Daily You, and that's actually where I first found her. But then after a few years on the channel, she decided to branch out on her own. But for some reason, when she branched out, she wasn't able to be as successful as she was on the joint channel. And around this time is when a lot of people stopped watching her, including myself, to be honest. And usually with these YouTubers, a lack of consistency is what hurts their channels. But Grace has actually managed to stay pretty consistent over the years. But looking through her channel, it seems that the content is the issue. And she's still uploading the types of content that were huge back in 2015 and is not really adapted to current day standards. It also seems like a huge focus of her brand is now her podcast not too deep. And considering that not a lot of people actually really talk about it and she usually only gets around 7,000 views of podcast on her channel, not taking into account streams of course. But she still has maintained a really loyal fan base, and I'm hoping that she can get on some modern day trends so she can start growing her channel again. Up at number 7, Tobuscus. So Toby Turner aka Tobuscus used to be huge on the platform and he made music videos as well as gaming videos. And back in the day he did really well, he was selling merch as well as action figures and dolls as well as making appearances on TV and movies. For about 10 years, he was totally crushing it. But then in 2016, his already declining brand took a massive hit when his ex-girlfriend uploaded a video claiming that she was sexually assaulted by Toby, giving a lot of detail in her video. Then after this, other women started to come out telling their stories of being in relationships with him, and he gained a reputation of being a cold-hearted and terrible person who had abused women. Then he came out with his side of the story, denying everything. But after the damage had already been done, and since his channel was already declining at this point, his brand was never able to fully recover. He's still uploading consistently, but getting very minimal views for his over 6 million subscriber channel. In at number 6, Marcus Butler. So Marcus Butler is another British YouTuber that used to be big back during the British invasion with people like Zoella and Casper, but has seemingly quit YouTube. In the past few years, Marcus's channel started to slowly fall out of relevancy, like a lot of other YouTubers on this list. But it seems like Marcus struggled a lot more with it as he had talked and now it seems like he wants to take a different direction in his career, as he's actually deleted all of the videos off his main channel with over 4 million subscribers on it. So I searched up what he's doing now and it seems like he had left social media for a bit, except for Instagram, but he's now returned and he said recently on Twitter that his main focus is now his clothing brand. And looking at the clothing, it does look very on brand for him now and it seems like he is very happy with it. So I really hope that it does well and he's able to continue with this venture. Up at number 5, Glozel Green. So Glozel is another OG YouTuber who was known for her hilarious skits and videos online. But after being on YouTube for many years, for whatever reason, her channel started to fade and her subscribers were not as interested in seeing her videos anymore. She even commented on her decline in a piece she did with Vanity Fair, where she said, it would be nice if YouTube were like, oh, you've been here for a while, let me help you out with this and that because it's so saturated and you've been loyal. That would be nice, but that's with any company. And she felt that she'd been left out in the cold by YouTube in favor of its current stars. In 2017, she tried to change her brand by launching a kids channel called Glowbugs, but it didn't take off as she had hoped, and she's still uploading pretty consistently to her main channel, opening up about her personal life for her true fans that are still with her, but not getting even close to the views that she once did. And at number four, Joey Crisefa. So Joey is another interesting one to me, as I don't want to say that he's totally irrelevant, as he still actually gets pretty good views on his channel, and he's uploading consistently. But he is someone that used to be at the forefront of YouTube, and now his name isn't as close to as talked about as it once was. Joey's channel was massive back in the day. He collabed with the biggest OG YouTubers at the time, but his channel started to slip, however. 
Thankfully for him though, his Escape the Night series that got tons of bigger influencers on his channel gained him a lot of traction in the YouTube world and helped him to gain his footing once again. He even spoke about his turbulent experience with the platform in a Vanity Fair article, where he said, YouTube used to be a place where the weirdos and outcasts would go to find comfort and find their community. Now it's almost like the popular kids kind of infiltrated our secret hideout. And he continued that he's not all that impressed with the content that is being produced by the latest big creators, calling a lot of it lazy. Right now his channel is doing pretty good, but he's losing about as many subscribers as he's gaining. So his channel could be in somewhat of a transitional period. And I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see where it goes. In at number three, Bethany Moda. So Bethany, who started out as Mac Barbie 07, used to be a huge lifestyle and beauty vlogger for younger people back in the day. And to my knowledge, she was one of the first YouTubers to ever land deals with mainstream companies. Like way back when she did a clothing line with Aeropostale in her peak. But after being a YouTuber for many years at that point, in about 2015, Bethany started to feel burnt out and said she needed to take a break from YouTube. So she started to take numerous breaks and would not upload consistently when she did return, resulting in many of her fans leaving her for the newer lifestyle YouTubers that were uploading more consistently. Currently, Bethany is still posting and is pretty inconsistent as it seems like a lot of her content is focused around her boyfriend, who is also a former huge YouTuber. But her views are obviously not what they once were, and she's still making content that was big back in the early days, but is not really big on YouTube anymore. Also in 2019, she was actually in the top 10 channels to lose the most amount of subscribers in that year, with her losing around 320,000 subscribers on her channel. In at number two, Ingrid Nielsen. So Ingrid used to be really big on YouTube in the lifestyle community when she had the name Miss Glamorazzi, and she made product collabs with tons of huge brands in her peak. But now that she's been on YouTube for over 10 years, her views aren't what they once were. Ingrid is still posting very regularly on her YouTube channel and although it seems like she's constantly trying to change up her content and do fresh things, unfortunately it hasn't stuck and her fan base does not seem to be growing. Ingrid has branched out of YouTube as well, starting a podcast called One Step, but it doesn't seem to be taking off. But with the shift in her content recently and how often she's now posting, I'm hoping that her channel is able to make a comeback. And up at number one, Prank vs. Prank. So Prank vs. Prank was a channel run by Jesse Wellens and Gianna Smith, and it documented the pranks that the couple would play on each other. Then they launched BF vs. GF, which was an extension of the Prank channel that turned into a daily vlogging channel for the latter part of their channel. And these two were huge, with USA Today ranking them as YouTube's biggest pranksters in 2013. But the demise of their channels are a bit different, as they spurred from a demise in the couple's relationship. Back in 2016, they uploaded a video called A New Chapter, where they tell their viewers that they are breaking up and therefore they won't be filming together anymore. They attribute a lot of their problems in their relationship to their daily vlogging and urge couples to not vlog together. As a result, Jesse took over the Prank vs. Prank channel and Gianna took over the Boyfriend vs. Girlfriend channel. They are both uploading regularly on their own channels, but it does not seem like they have been able to maintain their loyal fan base on their own. Okay guys, so that's all from me. Thanks so much for watching if you made it all the way here. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more juicy videos just like this. Also follow the IO team and our socials to be kept up to date with us. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see y'all in the next one.